Today we'll be looking at the starter template. One of the services that I provide is setting up a starter template for companies that have just acquired Revit and want to start slowly migrating from AutoCAD to Revit. I take it as a given that most architectural companies come from an AutoCAD background and when I, when I explain things I try and keep it as close to AutoCAD lingo as possible so that the people learning to use Revit will be learning it in familiar terms. The idea behind this template is to give you the skill set to take a small project at first from beginning to end, let's say end being municipal drawings in Revit. I like to close the loop, although there will be things that I'm going to leave out like drainage electrical layouts, those kind of things that I will show you how to do in AutoCAD and then bring into Revit. So the idea is to keep it simple and work with terms that are familiar to you. Let's get started. First thing to do would obviously be opening the template. To do that you go to Revit, you open Revit, you go to new, not open, New will ask you which template you want to use. You go to browse. You browse to wherever you have placed your template. I've got a folder called demo, demo template, and open. Okay, so start with your site and location. If you go to my blog www.yurifundake.com and you go to podcast. The very first three podcasts are all about setting up a site 100% correctly with all the detail that goes with that. Just that tutorial alone can take us the morning, so I'm not going to focus on that. I've made a very, very simple site that I'm going to import and show you how to do that. So let's get started with that. First thing you do is under your project browser, you go to site. Double click on that. We are now in site. See, there's a little something there that shouldn't be there. Next, you go to insert and you go to CAD link. This is very important. Do not import CAD because that will bring the CAD file and make it part of the Revit file. You want to link it like an XREF in AutoCAD. Go ahead, click that and go to demo site. At the bottom, import unit, drop down to custom factor one and say open. The next step would now be drawing up our topo surface. You do that by going to the massing and site tab and you go to topo surface. You go to place points, make sure that you use the levels indicated on the surveyor's drawing. The reason for that is then the levels on your building will be correct in relation to the site. The way you do that is to go to, well, as we can see, the first contour is 17,000. You go to elevation, you say 17, 1, 2, 3, 4, 000, and you place the points on that contour. I'm just extending it a little bit beyond the site. Next, the next contour is 17 and a half. You go to elevations tab there and you place the points on that contour. And the next one would be 18, one, two, three, there we go, and you continue moving forward. Next one is 18,500. To finish this off, you just say OK, and you've just created a site in 3D. Let's go to the 3D view. Obviously, that is level zero, and the start of the site is level. 17,000 but we have just created our first site in 3D. Let's go back to the site 
And um, for this project, let's just clip this site to its site boundaries. To do that, uh, first go WF to go to wireframe, or you can go choose wireframe from the bottom there. You say split surface, you select your site, you use the pick tool, pick line tool, and you click your site boundary. Oops, we've done that one, so let's just uh, delete that one. Delete, so finish, and delete that. And now you'll see we've trimmed our site to its boundaries. While we are in site, let's finish off the site with the information we have. I'll show you how to add some more detail to the site. This is going to be the first thing that's going to seem quite familiar in terms of AutoCAD. The way I add more detail to this 3D site is in 2D using lines. Um, to do that, you use detail lines. It's either the shortcut DL or you go to annotate and detail lines. If you press detail lines, there's a line style we can drop down and I would have set up lines for you. I would say line one is very thin, line 10 is very thick. If you want to know exactly what the thicknesses are of those lines, go to Manage. You go to Additional Settings, Line Styles. You drop down. And if you go down, you'll get to lines 1 to 10. Let's close that quickly. Line weights, 1 to 10. So a scale line 1 at a scale of 1 in 10 would be 0.18. As the scale goes up, the line will get thinner and so on. You can work through this yourself, but I'm going to choose, we're working at 1 in 100 at the moment, I'm going to go with a line 5, 1 in 100, that will give us a 0.5 thickness. So we go DL for default detail line, So we go annotate DL. We go to line five. Let's just go to our wireframe view. You can get that at the bottom over there. Wireframe. And let's just use the pick tool and let's just pick those lines. To indicate our building, our site prop, uh, site building boundary line. Excuse me. Okay. Let's use a pen that's a little bit thinner, like a one, <clears throat> just to do those cross, add those crosshairs, and add the circles. There we go. For this project, let's just say that our building line is 2 meters. Let's add that as well. Let's choose a, a line. Let's just call it hidden line. Uh, let's use the pick tool again. And let's just offset by 2 meters. There we go. That's our building line. To trim, use TR 
or you could also use under under architecture uh, sorry un, under modify the trim tool and you just select the two you want to keep and it will trim this is the same as the filler tool in AutoCAD there we go now something I've picked up here is that the line is green and I actually want that to be black uh, we know the lines called hidden hidden lines so we go to manage additional line styles we drop that down we look for hidden uh, there we go see it's green change that to black apply okay there we go um, we can go to hard lines again you can also find hard, hard lines at the bottom this is just showing our 3d site with 2d detail on that if you want to change the intervals that you see contours you go to you select the site or you don't have to actually sorry you go to massing and site model site you click on there you change increments to 500 and it will now show the contours at 500 to label them you click on label contours and you just draw a line through your site and when you zoom in you will see that they are now all labeled at half a meter intervals to add text to the site you use the command TX or you go to annotate text I've set up different text sizes let's use two and a half zoom in type building line 2.5 meters that is how you would add text at this point we are pretty much done with the import so I'm going I'm going to select the import and delete it and in our site we now have a site plan the previous tutorial is I'm a, I normally like to keep my site view clean um, what I mean by that is in Revit if you want to create uh, if you want to create views you can right click and say duplicate to uh, just duplicate or duplicate with detail if you say duplicate with detail what this would do is add a duplicate of the view I then right click on that rename that and call that site plan the reason I do that is I like to keep the native site clean keep it clean for modeling or whatever we want to do and then duplicate that view and develop my 2d 3d site plan in a drawing that I call site plan or site development plan or whatever you want to call it for your project sometimes happen that you have a site plan site development plan um, one in one of them in one in 500 one in one of them maybe in one in 200 to get the different scales you'll each time have to duplicate site and then change the scale you would change the scale at the bottom for this tutorial we go, we're going to keep it at one in hundred but I just wanted to mention that that is how you do it let's say for instance you've got a ground floor plan and you want to do an electrical plan you go to ground floor you right click on it you say duplicate with detail uh, after doing that you would rename it electrical plan and do your electrical in that duplicate uh, whatever you do in the duplicate won't appear on the ground floor view so let's carry on and set our levels for our building to set up levels go to your north elevation any elevation will do but let's use north for this one you'll see at the bottom you've got 
level zero and that is at zero. I've already worked out I want my ground floor to be at 18700. So I'm going to click on the figure there and type in 18700. That should disappear and I should now have my ground floor 200 above my natural ground level. Let's just change that to ground floor level. It will prompt do you want to rename corresponding views? That means do you want to rename it over there in the project browser as well? You do, so you say yes and you'll now see you've got a ground floor level. Let's say for instance you want to do an electrical plan, you would now right click on that, say duplicate with detail or duplicate without, depending if you want to take your 2D, 2D detail with and create a new view. Let's set up the rest of our levels. To do that, you go to Architecture, Architecture, and you go to Levels. I'm just going to put two levels down, one above, and one below. The one above, I want to be 2975 above my ground floor level. And the one below, I want that to be 850, let's try that again, 850 below. If I zoom in, I want to rename that one wall plate. And the yes, and the one at the bottom, I want to rename Let's just get that out of the way. Drag that down a little bit and say TO for top of foundation. And yes, there we go. So we've just set up all the levels for our project. Let's say for argument's sake that we've created a little design in AutoCAD. We want to bring that little design in and do the technical drawings. What we'll do is we'll make sure that we are in ground floor level. We'll go to insert. CAD link once again, not import. We'll go to drawing demo plans. Make sure it's on custom, on one, and open. Okay, we've just imported that little site. We can go to site plan um, and just let's select it. We say move MV or you could use the move tool up there. Let's grab that MV. You would snap to the corner and then bring it over. I've just got to mention that I'm using Revit on a Mac and I've got a little bit of graphic cards problem using VMware. So I'm just going to drag it to where it's close enough. So there we go. That didn't work. I'm just going to tap that down. And that's good enough. Okay. First thing we're going to do is add riser walls. Those would be the walls that go from the top of the foundation to the ground floor level. To do that, let's go to top of foundation. Let's go to walls. You go to architecture and you go to walls. 
I've set up some basic walls for you in the template. Let's go to 270 cavity wall. The height shouldn't be unconstrained, that should be to ground floor. And we don't want to draw from wall centers, but actually finished faced exterior. We want to select a corner and start drawing. If you see that the wall is on the wrong side, just hit the space bar and it will flip back to the other side. Let's carry on and um, quickly draw up all the walls. You just pull it down, snap to the corners like you would in AutoCAD. Go up, there we go, and close that. To see it, go to your shade mode at the bottom, shade, and I'm just going to select the site, right click, hide, element. That will just make it easier for us to see what we are doing. The same goes for 110 walls. Just remember we're busy drawing foundation walls, so they will actually go through door openings and windows. We're going to go to walls, drop down, 110, Zoom in, snap, go, I actually drew that on the wrong side, I'm just going to hit space bar and that jumps over. And there's another wall there. Not quite accurate. W A. And obviously, underneath that will be a wall as well. And there we go, we've set up all the riser walls. Let's move on to our ground floor level walls. But before we do that, let's quickly just switch the site on. You'll click on the button at the bottom called Close Reveal Hidden Elements. You will select the site, right click, go to Unhide Element, and then switch that off again. There you go. So we've just switched that back on and we'll leave this as we found it. Go to Crown Floor. Here we basically do the same. Go to Walls. Wall height, we say that needs to go up to wall plate level. We want it from finished face exterior and we want to use the 270 cavity wall. I'm going to snap to that and basically repeat exactly the same. steps that we did in the for the riser walls. Okay.
and there we go we've just drawn up all the walls for the project and if we go to our 3d view there we go we'll see that we've got our walls we look below we've got our riser walls and in the next tutorial we will be adding foundations do and it's something we can also do in 3d mode or 3d view go to structure and you go to foundations walls under properties you go to edit type and this will show you the size of the foundation if you want to set up your own size you go to duplicate you can call it uh, 270 cavity foundations you can say okay you can go to width I'm happy with that let's call it 270 and okay let's just pan or scroll the drawing and um, all you have to do is select your 270 walls and it will automatically add foundations to that. Let's do the same for the 110 walls. Let's go to edit, let's go to duplicate, let's say we call that 110 foundations. So the width is 600 and let's call that 220. You do the same, you just select the walls and you've just added all your foundations as easy as that foundations done let's move on to the roof next New architecture roof and then go to pick walls Okay, let's go to overhang. Let's make the overhang 750. And in the properties drop down, you can select the type of roof that you want to use. For now, I'm going to use the 125 generic. Now, when it comes to roofs, they can get very complex. You can add different materials, different layers, stack different layers. <clears throat> you can add insulation, all of those things. but for now, we're not going to do that. We're just going to use the, the roof as a placeholder for later 2D detail. So for now, the roof is just going to be there for as a placeholder. I just want to quickly change the color. To do that, you go to Properties, you go to Edit the Structure, you go to the category over there, and then you go to Default Material just a plain gray so we look for default there we go and we say okay okay apply okay turn to gray we're going to pick walls now for this roof we're going to do a hip uh, sorry a gable end so we select the four walls there we go now if there's a little triangle next to it it means that that part has got a slope if we finish the roof now and we have a look in 3d we'll have a hipped roof <clears throat> we don't want slope on either side where the cable is going to be so we're going to select the roof again go to edit footprint and go back to wall plate. There we select that part of the roof. We say we go to define slope and we switch that off. We select it, switch define off. I'm also going to change the overhang there to let's call that 300. Going to do the same on this side, switch that off, 
change it to 300 and there we go okay so we have a little pitched roof now to attach the gable walls to the roof you select that wall you go to attach and you attach it to the roof also the side walls attach a side wall attach roof just swing it around and do the same on this side attach and we're done. Should you want to change the pitch of the roof, select the roof, go to the properties, go down and say 20 degrees. Apply and your roof pitch will be updated. It will be updated but still your wall plate level would not have changed. So your wall plate level would still be uh, 2975 above ground and that is adding a roof